G'day, Andrew and Nick here from Hookline and Sinker. Now, if you're out enjoying the water around any of Tasmania's major ports, such as here in the River Derwent, Nick, chances are you might have interaction with a big ship like that. And it sort of goes without saying, Andrew, that that is a good thing to stay out of the way of. Yeah. But there are just a couple of simple things to bear in mind if you are in the vicinity of a big ship like that. In ports and harbours all over the country, ships like this one are coming and going at all hours of the day and night. The issue is that most of these ports and harbours are popular with recreational water users as well. The trick is to keep the two groups as safe and as happy as possible. As boat owners, we've probably all shared the water with ships on occasion, but we've come to the port of Hobart to get an idea of what it's like from the ship's perspective. That red and white flag up there means that the ship is under the command of a pilot. Now, a pilot is someone who knows the local area. He knows where all the hazards are and what to steer clear of. He's a master mariner, not dissimilar to yourself, Andrew. The other thing to bear in mind in this kind of situation, when a ship's coming into port or leaving port, is that there will be more activity. That little pilot boat there, tugboats on their way out. Probably the last thing these guys need is us in our boat hanging around. The pilotage flag is worth looking out for because it means the vessel flying it has the right of way over everything else, power, sail, even oars. To get the pilot on and off the ship usually means a rope ladder over the side. We sent Nick up as well. On the bridge, the captain of the ship hands over control to the pilot who does a series of checks to make sure the ship is running like it should. So, Captain, if we could have the engine dead slow stern. Dead slow stern. Yes. Dead slow stern. Dead slow stern. I was on board the 178 metre long bulk carrier Mount Baker, and from the height of the bridge and looking down the length of the ship, it certainly made the River Derwent seem much, much tighter. We decided to conduct a scientific experiment. Bar crusher, bar crusher, this is Mount Barker. Mount Barker, Mount Barker, right over. Mount Barker, this is Bar Crusher. I've got a good visual of you just here, so sort of, there you are. Yeah, Roger that, Bar Crusher. I haven't got your visual. Um, uh, maybe go for a spin across the bow and let's see what we can see. Yeah, Roger that. You know, uh, I, I find it hard to believe you can't see me here, but uh, I will come across the bow over. I'll try not to get run over, over, over. Get run over, over. Nah. A bit going on on the bridge during this sort of operation. This is quite a big ship and obviously you've got to get it up and lined up to go through the Tasman Bridge. Still can't see the bar crusher. Um, so, you know, having little boats around is just an, an added thing. You can see they're talking about a yacht that's coming out across. Yeah, got your visual there, bar crusher. Got you there. Not too close, please, over. And got in there. This ship also, your vision is completely... You've gone, you've disappeared from sight, Bar Crusher. You are non-visual, I cannot see you. Yeah, Roger that. I can still see you. You're quite big and bearing down on me, over. <laughs> Roger that, I'm quite visible. But as I was saying, this ship, the view is further obscured by these massive deck cranes, which makes it kind of hard to see where you're going, but also really hard to line up going through the bridge. Got you there now, Bar Crusher. Well done. Safely negotiated. Bon voyage. As the river gets narrower, tension builds on the bridge. Could we have an update, please, uh, with the Tasman Bridge and also the current southern profile, 0 to 4 and 4 to 8 metre mark, please? How was wondering if we could steer course uh, 310? 310? Yes. Helm 45. 45. Yes. Another hazard here in the River Derwent is, of course, the Tasman Bridge. Now, it's a difficult enough thing for the pilot to navigate the big ship through as it is without little recreational boats or kayaks buzzing about. The Tasman Bridge is not an obstacle to be taken lightly. In January 1975, the bulk carrier Lake Illawarra got her approach all wrong and slammed into the bridge, taking two pylons, a 127-metre section of road, four cars, 12 lives with her. 
heading past the Aurora Australis, which means in piloting terms we are at the point of no return. We're 1.8 kilometres or one nautical mile from the Tasman Bridge. We are committed. This ship, fully loaded, will take one mile that distance to pull up if you put the engines hard astern. She takes some stopping. If you happen to be between the ship and the bridge, it is absolutely your responsibility to get out of the way. And you won't have much time. Ships are deceptively fast, and on this phase of the approach, engines are set to full ahead to give maximum steerage. There is literally no room for error. None. It's worth noting that recreational vessels are not permitted to use the main navigation span of the Tasman Bridge or even the secondary spans on either side. So the key message here is keep out of the way. And that applies as the ship makes her way into or out of her destination berth. Another thing to watch out for is as a ship is berthing is the thrust from all the tugs and even the ship itself. Big ships have bow thrusters and the thrust from these tugs, well it can go any way, it can go 360 degrees, it doesn't just come out the back of the boat. So you need to watch that. If you're in a kayak and you get caught in that, it's quite a ride. The rule book says you must stay at least 90 metres away and we'd say err on the side of caution and multiply it by five or even ten. There's a lot going on at this point and it's no place for a small tinny or kayak. So the key points to remember when operating in the vicinity of ships are assume the ship has the right of way, it's big, hard to manoeuvre and will take a long time to stop and it may not have seen you. It will also do more damage to you than you to it if you happen to get in the way. Ships move faster than they look. If you think one might be coming your way, make the move early. If you're in the port area, make sure you monitor the proper frequency on your VHF. In Hobart, for example, that's channel 12. That way the ship can get in direct contact with you and vice versa in case of emergency. And finally, keep really well clear when ships are manoeuvring with tugs. There are massive blasts of water that can come out from any angle, easily capable of capsizing a smaller boat or kayak. For more information on this or a heap of other boating related topics, head to the MAST website at mast.tas.gov.au.